है All right. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Hey, Meryl. Oh, it looks like we have Luke and Christopher with us too. Yes. Um, and we have five minutes to go. Ah, oh, so glad that worked. Yes, I was of course doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, I'm turning off my telephone. Hey Jim. Hey Jim. Hi Meryl. Hi Gordon. Hello Jim. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Well, thank you. Good. It looks like Luke is with us too. Um, hopefully, Evelyn will be able to join us, but at least we'll have a quorum for five o'clock. We still have a little ways to go. Two minutes. Hi Luke. Hi. How are you? Good. Hello. Luke. Hello. Hello. You're able to be home for this one. Oh yeah. Yep. With about ten minutes to spare, the traffic's pretty brutal out there. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Indeed. Hey Jeremy. Hey Christopher. Um. I'm going to just um, stop my video for a minute and go check to see if Evelyn's having any trouble getting in, since this is her first time. I'll be back with you. OK. Um, Jim, how are you? Everything good? Everything is good, yes. <laughs> but the, the traffic downtown is unbelievable. My goodness. Yeah, really? Well, I'm in Manhattan at the moment. Yeah. But, <laughs> but after this meeting, I'm going to drive back up. There is a difference between only a slight, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Luke, you're well. Probably not great either. <laughs> nice fish the other day, Luke. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right. I think. Susan Baker. Probably. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> Great. Everybody's here, looks like. Um, and it is now five o'clock and we have a quorum. Um, I'm Meryl Mead Fox. Um, I'm the co-chair of the Historical Commission with Gordon Kahn. Um, was raising his hand. <laughs> and um, why don't we go around and just introduce everybody if we could. Uh, Gordon Kahn, co-chair. Jim McAuliffe, commissioner. And Luke Manning, <laughs> commissioner. Great. And we have one more um, brand new commissioner who's supposed to be joining us, but um, she's not with us yet. Um, luckily, we do have a quorum with four people, so we can start. Can you see me? Can you see? Can you see me? I'm Susan Baker. Oh, Evelyn is here. Oh, good. Glad to see. Evelyn, do you want to introduce yourself? 
You have to uh, turn yourself off mute. Oh, yes, Evelyn, you need to turn yourself off mute. And if you could start your video, that would be great. Here we go. Oh, good. There you are. Hi. Hey, hi. <laughs> Welcome. Thank uh, you. Could you just um, introduce yourself uh, just by name and, and that you're a commissioner? <laughs> yes, Evelyn Lakis. And I, this is my first meeting. So glad to be here. Welcome. 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 Yeah. Um, okay, and um, Susan Baker, I don't have you on the agenda. Are you? No, I I have also um, just volunteered to become a member of the commission, and um, apparently I got this this invitation to this meeting, so I'm here. But I don't think I've been voted in properly yet, so I don't think that I, the selectmen have voted for me yet. Okay, oh. so, we haven't. Um, that's great. You're very welcome to <laughs> just observe the meeting if you want to do that. Yes, that'd be great. Okay, and um, you don't have to keep your video on if you just want to listen. Um, well, to well, I'll turn my mute on, so I, yeah, that's fine. Great, yeah, it'd be great if everybody could mute themselves um, except for the commissioners, and then we'll go through each proposal one by one. Um, okay, so we're starting with 10 Rider Court, and um, uh, Chris Carson is here to present. Um, And Gordon is going to be doing screen sharing about the proposal. And Chris, if you could turn off your mute, that would be great so that we can hear you. Um, Chris, are you with us? I see your name, but it looks like you're still muted, Chris. Hmm. Maybe he signed in and left. Um, All right. Well, maybe we should um, go okay. on to 130 School Street since he's not here. Yeah, hold on for just one minute. Let me. Okay. Oh, you might be able to unmute him. Maybe just give me a sec. Okay. Uh... I'm here. Oh, hey, Chris, there you are. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm not very good at this uh, Zoom meeting thing. It's the second time I've had to do this, and I've I didn't quite understand that there's a task bar at the top and it was it was invisible. So I apologize, but I'm here. No. <laughs> That's right, right. We're glad to have you. Um, and you. Uh, we're glad you're unmuted so we can hear you. Um, if I, I don't know how it is on your computer, but there there is a thing that says stop video next to the mute. If you could, or, or it says stop or start, if you could start your video so we can see you, that would be great. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's better. Hooray. Okay. Nice to see you and hear you. Um, yes, nice so, to be here. Thank you. So if you could, um, we have the proposal in front of us. Gordon has um, other items that you've submitted. So if you could just present to us about your proposal and Gordon will find the appropriate documents to show us, that would be great. The first document I have, Chris, is of course your application. Okay. Uh, where you're- um, please, please continue. Okay. Well, you're talking about a brief description of the proposed work which is a new foundation, bump out, complete house, new dormer, it says. Oh, I have more actually from the application. So the proposal is to remove the kitchen, the adjacent shed room and the second floor closet, um, excavate for a full basement, cor pour concrete walls, add three feet to the existing footprint while making a new kitchen with annex and access to the basement with a new staircase. Is that correct? That, that's absolutely correct. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, would would you like to me expand on that, or? Yes, please. I mean, maybe it would be helpful. I can open up the existing drawings that you sent to us. Sure. Great. So here's the existing drawing, um, and Ryder Court is over here. Is that correct? I recognize that porch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't see. I don't see the drawing. So I'm. I'm, I'm just gonna fly blind here, but um, everything okay. you have, I've submitted, I'm very familiar with it. And uh, yeah. Uh, the you, know, you, don't, you don't see the drawings that are up on the screen mm -hmm. now? Um, no, I'm so sorry, I do not. Um, Meryl, do I, you see them? Which, I see them, yeah, mm -hmm. it's okay. I see them. Does, that, does everybody else see them on the commission? Yeah, I do, I, I see do. Them. Good, okay. So, so, so what, what, I'm showing, yeah, what, I'm showing, what I'm showing is the existing side elevation east 
I'm showing the uh, second floor existing plan, mm -hmm. um, the first floor existing plan, mm -hmm. um, and more of the first floor ex existing plan, the part that doesn't have the garage. Um, and then what I'm gonna open quickly is the proposed plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm just looking on at my own, my own, I have my own pages here and you have that in front of you. Um, there's, <laughs> There's very little to say. Um, you've actually have, uh, said everything already. Uh, the intent here, if I may, is to uh, improve the, the area that currently is the kitchen uh, by three feet and to put a full honest foundation under it in the annex room, uh, allowing for a full basement so that the owners can uh, install mechanicals uh, they would like to heat the house. Again, it was heated at one time. It has a monoflow heating system in it. Um, their intent is to do that again, uh, to install, uh, you know, nice period radiators in the first floor. Um, we'll be uh, doing some other work to the undercarriage of the house to uh, make an access, make the house accessible from underneath uh, and shore up all the... Uh, point loads of the house and uh, allowed for insulation to be placed underneath the floor. Uh, we, we will also be endeavoring to uh, insulate the walls, but all that is, uh, is uh, just part of the uh, envelope of the entire package. What, what's important to your uh, committee is the fact that we are asking to basically extend three feet off the back. Um, we will take off what's currently visible on the existing floor plan and put it back exactly the way it was before with some uh, additions, which would be a French door in the annex room or the den, di den dining room as it's called on this plan here, a uh, couple lights. And uh, basically that's the only big change um, from what's currently there. Uh, so I'm, I'm, it's, not, it's not a very elaborate plan, but there's a lot going on with this project. Uh, I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking at the south elevation, which I think is the rear. It's the side opposite Ryder Court that faces the back. Is that correct? Yes, that faces, yes, it does. It faces the back, yep. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at two, two gables, one in front of another, and then a shed roof that comes down to what I believe is the garage. Yes. And there's a door now in that portion um, that is uh, covered by the shed roof. Yes. Now, can you tell me what is different on this elevation than what exists now? Very little, to be honest with you. What is currently there now is a, a door. So if I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna have to do this this way. I'm so sorry. I don't have the plans up in front of me that you have, but this is, this is, the, this is the proposed elevation. You can all see that? Uh, okay, so that's the French door you're referring to, which we don't have in our plan. Yeah, with side lights. Yeah, no, that should that should have been provided because it was all part of the original set that was sent over from uh, from Derry over at the Welford Building uh, Department. Chris, I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. Can you show me that one more time? Sure. This is the this is the proposed. What's currently there right now in this spot where this French door is is a single door. That well, accesses that's what, the back. That's road. what we're looking at now. I'm sorry. So hold that up again one more time so I can just take a look. Mm -hmm. So to the left of this elevation, there's a window up in the gable that remains. There's a shorter window, probably in a kitchen, down mm -hmm. below and slightly to the left. Then you have this French door with two flanking windows that you're proposing. And Correct. then the window that's in the garage is existing. So Correct. you're talking about this French door with the two flanking windows. Correct. Okay. And the footprint back here is bumping out three feet towards the rear? Correct. Across the whole rear elevation or what portion of it? Can you point to the drawing where the bump yeah, out? Yeah, from this, from this corner here to this, to this corner right here. The garage, <laughs> the garage does not change. And are you going to be reusing the existing cornice that's on the rearest gable? 
The rake. Everything, board. everything is to be put back together exactly the way it is uh, currently. Uh, the pictures, pictures were sent to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Colored pictures with dotted lines and explanations were sent to you. Uh, hopefully that you, hopefully you got them. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they should. Photographs. Pardon me. You're referring to the photographs. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, we did get them. Okay. So what you what you're looking at there will be what's going to be there when we're all done exactly the same way historic gutter historic uh, crown moldings and cornices and rake boards and the whole the whole works everything's going to be put back exactly the way it is currently including most importantly uh the white clabbered side that faces i guess the main main street Wellfleet main street mm -hmm. um that's kind of the money side of the house uh that's where there's two um proper entry doors and so forth. It was, uh, you know, that was always going to be the the money side of the house. I guess that's the way I would put it because that's where the clapboard is. Uh, the, the front of the house with the, with the porch that faces um, Ryder Court is uh, the main entrance that they use. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're not touching any of that, but, you know. Uh -huh. So clapboard, white paint, the whole everything that's there now will be put back just the way it is. The, the just, crowns that we're looking at at the windows will either be reused or replicated, is that right? Correct. And the shutters, same thing, shutter dog, shutter hardware, so it all looks like it really works? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, what's currently there now uh, is, is, like I say, will not be altered. It's going to be all put back. They spent a lot of time, we spent a lot of time working on this house through the years. Mm -hmm. uh, restoring the historic glass, um, all that sort of stuff. In fact, it, um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful house and obviously well loved. There's no doubt. Yes, uh, the donors are very, very happy with it. The uh, their intent is to live here full time. Um, that's not going to happen for a little while yet, for obvious reasons. Uh, once we get the kitchen built and we get heat and insulation in the house, um, they'll be wrapping up their concerns in New Jersey and moving up here. Okay. Well, thank you for all the care you've taken and the work that you've done so far. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to work on, on these houses. I've done several of them in, in Wellfleet over the years and <laughs> sort of a little passion of mine. I do love the old houses. Mm, so do we. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> does anybody on the committee, any other commissioner have any questions about the work? No. On the west elevation uh, proposed, it, it looked like a chimney had been removed. Is, is that true? There, there, there was a chimney. There, there is currently part of a chimney there uh, inside the house. The, the outside portion of that chimney was taken down several years ago because it, it doesn't service anything. It was, it was a useless uh, chimney and it was in bad it was in disrepair so we elected to remove it and just you know roof back over in that location and uh, what's currently it, it's currently there in in its form um, it, again it does nothing so we're going to pursue taking it down completely and getting rid of it yeah which of the two chimneys are we talking about there are two that are shown on your west elevation drawing there's one on the higher roof and one on the lower roof yeah, um, the one on the higher roof is, is currently uh, been repaired and is functional. And, and are you and saying the one on the lower roof has been removed? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing uh, anything on any of my plans that show it coming. The second chin is going up, but maybe. I'm looking at a drawing that is uh, dated the 25th of September. 2019 prepared by Sarah Benjamin. Yeah, yeah, that's the existing, the existing house as existing, yes. Labeled West Elevation. Oh, but that's existing. So I guess what we should be looking at is proposed. Yeah. If we have it. Oh, this is proposed up above though. Page six of. We, uh, we submitted plans that, show, that, that, that say, existing uh so that you'd be clear about what was existing because it's because really there's so very little to this say is, 
Okay. That, that it was might have been confusing. It didn't show a great big giant addition that right. would be would be obvious, you know. So no, no, we appreciate that it's hard to describe. And now we're looking at the proposed west elevation that omits the chimney. Yeah. That Jim, Jim noticed. Is that chimney currently gone, or is it there? Well, as a house is right now, there's one chimney, and it's an active chimney. So it's um. That's it. That's all that exists. The, what's inside the confines of the house is the remnants of what was the second chimney I see. that was a service chimney, probably for um, an old oil burner that we took out many, many years ago. Sure. So, Chris, if the drawing uh, that's dated 2019 shows there are two chimneys and currently there aren't two chimneys, were there two chimneys in 2019? Um, again, I, I truly wish I had the pictures that you're looking at, uh, but yeah, that could very well be. I don't recall exactly when we took that other chimney down, but it could have been then, but I don't, I don't have in, in any of my drawings what you're, what you're describing. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be difficult, but I just don't have that. Another set over here that might have something in it, but. So, so as, as I look at this, um, I personally don't have any problem with what you're planning on doing at the rear. I'm kind of not thrilled that the second chimney has been removed and apparently was there in 2019. So I'd like to personally, just speaking for myself, take a drive by and see, see that that chimney is not there. Unless I can find a photo in here that shows that, hold on. Yeah, it's not there. You're welcome to drive by at any point in time. Absolutely. Sure. The owners have uh, renters. Uh, at the moment. Yeah. Oh, I think I see the picture you're describing. Finally. Finally, finally, finally. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I believe this is this this is what you're describing right here. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah that's the one. Okay. My my apologies for not having that up and ready to go. No. You do actually do have the picture here. So yes, <clears throat> this this chimney was um a problem because it was it was falling down and it had to be it had to be dealt with at the time so it wasn't really something that we thought too much about we felt like it had to be dealt with because it was decrepit bricks were falling out and um it it wasn't it wasn't being used for anything it was if anything it was a, probably an add-on that was uh early earlier in the last century maybe the 30s perhaps when this back end addition was added to this house because this house had gone through several additions and this part that we're um, asking to be able to take down and rebuild was probably somewhere in the 30s or the 40s when it was built. That's my my best guess. And that chimney was added at that time. It was, it was incidental and it was added to the outside of the second addition to this house. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, well, it, was, it was a bad repair. We, we needed to deal with it. Mm -hmm. This this house looks like it's two three quarter capes who were that were added together, and and I thought that was the description that we were given of the house. Well, it um, was floated over from uh, Billingsgate. Okay. Yeah, and um, at the time that that was done, my assumption is that it was the largest front section, including that taller chimney. And, and, and then a second um, portion of this house was added on at some point in time, I believe after it, it had gotten here to this, to this spot in town. Mm -hmm. um, I did do some you know, minor research as much as that best I could. The owners had some explanations for it, but um, you know, there's no, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have any empirical evidence of, of when those additions were put on. I, I, I guess that them, the age and and the materials that were used to come up with my my thesis on it. Mm -hmm. Gordon, you have the form B on this house, right? I do. Hold on. We have a form B, which is the historic inventory of the house. Um, it was done. I, oh, is this a more? I I can't remember. Yeah, this is done back in. This is the form B, date of construction about 1800, 1860 added on to. Yeah. 
Um, and then what do they say down below about um, the house itself? Okay. Oh, good. This is an updated form B. I'll let you handle this part now. Okay. Oh yeah, it says a main block and two accretions. Um, the additions include a one-story L-shaped infill portion at the northeast corner and a one-story garage added. The three-bay main block is a front gabled building with Greek revival features. Appears to have been built onto an earlier smaller house as described under the historical narrative below. Um, I'm just trying not to read too too much of this. Let's see. Yeah. yeah, the historical narrative is about is about the area more than about the house. Mm -hmm. um, so so, and that's about the people who've lived in the house. So if you could go back to the beginning, Gordon. Yeah, I'm just looking at this, the other chimney. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to get a sense of whether that's an early chimney from what she has written here. Um, uh, let's see. The south ele elevation where the earlier house was incorporated is eight bays deep, has two gable dormers, contains two door entries. The north elevation of the main block has a single centered window at the first story and a gabled pedimented dormer with a double hung two over two window flanked by fixed four light sa sash. The house rests on a brick foundation. Um, let's see. Yeah. So it's it it sounds like sh we don't know for sure either. It's just it's an assumption yeah. that it's two different houses put together, but we don't know for sure. Right. And she doesn't. Do, I don't see anything about the chimneys. Do you see anything? There's one, there's one chimney mentioned. Oh, okay. There's a narrow brick chimney between the dormers at the south slope of the roof. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so any other questions from any other commissioners about this proposal? Is the um, foundation plan or the elevation showing the foundation uh, able to be pulled up again? This elevation that shows this new foundation? No, I see it on the left-hand side of my screen, but it's tiny. Um, it, it just shows the eight-foot pour under the section of the house. Okay, just tell me when to stop here. I, I just wasn't totally cl clear which um, portion of the house was getting the new foundation. It, it's the the wing off the, the rear of the house, right? Um, Luke, I can't uh, can't help you as much as I'd like to because I. You you have you're looking at plans on your end that I don't see on my screen. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, we're looking so, at um, so with the, the this is the existing this is the existing uh, structure here. Yeah. This right here, this area right here is the right. portion of the house that we're we're endeavoring to you know take down and, and rebuild. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yeah, and that's uh, the the full the the full foundations under that portion of the house. I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Correct. So you're a good, um, uh, I don't know, you're a good 13 or 15 feet away from that other chimney that still exists with the working fireplace. Oh yeah, absolutely, yep. That's quite, that's quite a ways away. Yeah, so you should be able to excavate that and not have the sugar bowl effect take out that chimney at the same time. No, like I said earlier in my, uh, explanation um what we're endeavoring to do is to go under under the house and give these people uh, a much better um secure uh inner wall um so to preserve the the footings and the foundations of the house currently right mm -hmm. that under the existing part of the house um and then to uh address any point loads that there might be and get good solid footings and posts and so forth to secure the house as it currently is. It's, um, it's got a lot of character, let's say that. It's not as bad as some houses I've walked through in Truro, but it's got some, it's got some slope to it and some, you know, some interesting 
you know, features as it's kind of declined through the years. We, we are, our intent is to, you know, preserve it as it sits right now and stop that from doing anything else. Now, the central chimney is, uh, is in remarkably good condition, and that's going to be obviously one of the things that we're going to make sure that we, we secure that properly, all that sort of thing. Yeah, that, that all makes sense to me. And, yeah. you know, everybody in a year-round house needs more than a closet for uh mechanicals yeah but yeah i, I just important. wasn't sure if you uh did the excavation for an eight foot pour how big that excavation would actually get by the time they could set panels and do everything so we have uh we're going to be using uh brundage site work on this project because Corey has had the experience before um specifically with the um Truro vineyard uh, working for Art Holton and uh, Jonah, our, our friend, um, doing the same exact same thing, going under the building and excavating and making um, making area available so that you can you can get new piping, you can get new wiring, you can get insulation in, you know, all those things that are important, right? Mm -hmm. So he's going to be uh, available to this project for a variety of tasks. Um, and one of them is shoring, if that helps to, you know, yeah, answer absolutely. that question. Uh, we're also showing the, on the uh, elevations how we're going to uh, stay away from the garage, uh, not undermine that footing at all. And, um, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be tricky in the, up in the beginning to get, you know, all the things pulled together properly. But we've done this before and it's nothing, nothing new to me. So. Uh, but yeah, having a full, full basement is going to be a, a big deal for the owners. So I just want to clarify, so the full basement will just be under the new addition? Correct. Okay. And, and so there, what will be under the rest of the house? Well, what's there currently is going to stay there, but our intention is to burrow underneath the house and excavate what's not, uh, which hasn't been, you know, which is too close to the undercarriage where you can't get a body in to get mechanical things like pipes and wires and insulation. We have to, we have to do that. And at the same time, build interior walls and secure the foundation against the interior walls. Um, not deep, it's just, just enough to get in, but as a crawl space is what we're after with a, uh, a dust cap poured. So that the, the uh, you know, that keeps the moisture and, and, the, and the sand from shifting around and so forth. <laughs> <clears throat> so when you excavate within the existing basement to get that extra space, do you know the relationship between the bottom of the footings and where you're going to be excavating? Or is that where the temporary shoring comes in? Well, the temporary shoring is going to have to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, we don't know what's down there yet, but, you know, we assume that there's going to be, you know, obviously some compacted soils and yeah. when we get there, we get there. Yeah. Um, any other questions from commissioners, or do we have a, um, a motion? Are there additional windows on the proposed east elevation? Um, there is. Seems to me, I remember. There, there is, there is this, this, this dormer right here, this proposed. Gordon's trying to find that um, so that we can see it on our computers. These are the so, so, so on the, uh, so the proposed east elevation. There it is. So that's a new dormer, that large one. Yes, correct. So that dormer is very different from any of the other dormers on the house. Um, it is probably the only shed dormer. You're, you're correct about that. The others are all doghouse style. We're looking at different dormers. Can you hold up your dormer again? Yeah. 
Oh, yes, that is different. We have different plans than you are showing us. Uh, these are the plans that I got from the town. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, this, this all this is proposed. This was all sent. Yeah, no, I'm sure it was. I'm not, we, we're all, we're all we, doing our best. We didn't, we didn't get it from the town, though. Um, yeah. This is, yeah. So that, that large doghouse dormer with the two by two windows and the other double hung centrally located between them is existing then? This here? Yeah. yeah. That yeah, is. that was that was a project we did a long time ago. We uh, presented this to the uh, this very board. I'm not sure who was on it at the time. Uh, Trevor Pomp Pompriant was uh, the spokesman for this project, right? And that uh, was approved by the historic commission. We put that on. So, Chris, I just I just want to point. I'm I'm looking now at this at the at an area here where you're proposing a shed dormer, mm -hmm. uh, which is to the left of the existing gable dormer to the rear of the house. Is that correct? correct? If yes. I'm looking at the east elevation, you're now proposing a shed dormer. There is no chimney. Then there's a then there's the gable dormer. And then there's another dormer that you worked on with Trevor years ago. Yes, correct. Okay. And then a skylight, is that a skylight? That skylight's existing. Uh -huh. So really you're just adding a shed dormer at the rear to the basically the left side of the existing gable dormer. That's correct, yes. And it'll, can you hold it up one more time? Certainly. I apologize that we didn't get these plans from the town. So it has uh, three, three uh, awning windows or some sort of windows that have divided lights and them four over, two over two, are they? That's correct. Okay, that looks nice. Okay. I wonder if there's anything else that I need to discuss. I'm awfully glad that you have those drawings with you, Chris. Sorry? I'm awfully glad you have those drawings with you. I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering how come you don't have them. Um, I you have the full set that was, was sent along, and then I sent more that uh, had description uh, written, handwritten in, so that you would be certain that that was the existing versus the proposed. And uh, Chris, I think it's just a function of what's going on in town and lots of confusion and not enough hands to do it. So we're all... We're all just kind of bearing up and, and, and doing our best here. Well, Derry, Derry's been a big help to me with this, um, yeah. getting, the, getting the stuff to you. Um, yeah. She's so great, and she's doing a terrific amount of work. We, we really appreciate her work. Absolutely. So do we. Absolutely. Well, does anyone uh, <laughs> want to make a motion? I'd make a motion that we uh, accept the proposed plans uh, to do the eight foot foundation and the addition, uh, keeping in mind that the existing chimney be saved during the excavation. And if it needs to be shored up somehow to prevent it from being undermined, we come up with a way to do so. I, I second that motion. The only thing I'd like to add to it is that if in the course of the excavation, any of the existing foundation work becomes undermined. It also is shored up um, and, and, and repaired such that the exterior of the foundation walls that are visible with their original materials remain. Well, that's a, that's an absolute 100% intent is to shore up and to maintain the integrity of what's there currently. Yeah. Not, not to remove it or do anything um, you know, nefarious, which is really trying to, you know, actually go full full hog on trying to make maintain what's there and 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 give it, you know, what it needs to stay. You know, okay. kind of hard to put into words exactly. No, no, we got it. Okay. Um. All right. And so, um, I we need to vote. Uh, I, Merrill, vote aye. Jim, aye. Gordon, I. Luke, I. And Eveline? And Eveline, I. Okay, congratulations. Um, we will um, get back to Dari about this and just um, make sure that she has the plans that you are referring to. Um, so I, I'm just gonna make a note of that, um, make sure. 
Sorry. And the things that were different were the shed dormer. And what else, does anybody else remember what else was different about the two sets? The configuration of the new door flanked oh, by two right. windows. Okay. The door with the side lights, yeah. Uh, and the French door with side lights. Okay, great. All right, thank you so much for coming. And uh, yeah, we will be sending um, a, a note to Dari with our findings and um, then she'll go ahead with the next stage. Appreciate your time, all of you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. I'm gonna attempt to sign off now. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, the next um, proposal that we're going to be reviewing is 130 School Street, um, and this is Brian and Doriot. Is that how you say your name? Dorio. It's Dorio. Dorio. Like that? Okay, thank you. Um, yep. And the proposal is to lift the home, excavate for a complete foundation replacement, install full basement. Um, there will be a new cast in place concrete foundation with a full basement uh, proposed for the historic barn. Uh, both of the basements will house HVAC, plumbing, and electrical. Um, and um, who will be presenting this proposal? Uh, I mean, we both will, but the, my, you know, my name is Brian Wee. Hey, Brian. Right. Thank hey, you, Brian. first of all, congratulations, you guys. Thank you. This is a beautiful, beautiful house that I've been in several times. Oh, is um, that right? Yep. Yeah, and I just, I, I am a big fan of it and its location. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It is uh, gorgeous. We, we liked your um, inventive proposal here. You did a wonderful job. Yes, and you put it in one PDF, which makes our, my life much easier. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> I, I apologize for forgetting the survey that uh, you know that I had to second uh, as a second document. That's yes, so would, you, would you like to would you like to start with that document? Here's the. Let's see. Yeah, I I, I include this um, because it it. it it uh, outlines uh, the 100 foot buffer from the, you know, from the wetlands and was uh, recently done uh, for a new septic system that was put in uh, and you know, approved by the building department, um, you know, not too long ago, I think it was 2016. So this is, um, this is the survey here. Okay. This Correct. Is, and that's that school, school right? street is here. Mm -hmm. The quote unquote barn is over here. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the front entrance is here with that lovely staircase in front of it. And the kitchen's kind of back here, as I recall. And That's right. Pond is down over here, and there's a screen porch somewhere around here. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the screen porch. Um, that's the one piece that uh, is unlikely to survive. You know, portion of it. I'll I'll explain. I'll explain why. And we put we, we do intend to rebuild it, but um, uh, you know, uh, eyes wide open. We purchased the home. We love the history and the character of the house. Um, frankly, we really don't really want to change anything about it. Um, the, the biggest issue, and there are some issues with the home as uh, cited by the inspection report you know, prior, to, prior to buying it. So we did this eyes wide open. Um, you know, the biggest um, threat to, you know, the longevity of the home is the foundation uh, and it's failing foundation. It's failing in a number of places. Um, I think as cited in the uh, form it is believed to uh, sit on the original brick foundation, which um, is fairly invisible uh, up front. I think it's about six to eight inches visible um, during the winter. Uh, during the summertime, it's actually quite um, invisible because of how um, you know how lush it is. I mean, the, 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 the growth. Uh, you know, Brian, the Brian, may I, Brian, may I just interrupt you for a minute while we have the survey? Sure because I'd like to take a look at some of the other things when you're talking about those issues. I wonder yeah. if on this survey here, you could describe to us, is there any expansion of the footprint? Uh, no. So no, we have no intention in the footprint. Everything is contained within this footprint. Okay, good. Right. Okay, great, that's helpful, thanks. Thank you so much. So, so now looking here, um, can, I, can I just, uh, just add one thing? Um, yes. You want, you want to bring that back up? The survey. Yeah. Easier said than done. Hey, I'm, just, right. I'm just an architect. I don't get how to do all this stuff. <laughs> You're doing a great job, Gordon. Okay, thanks. Right, here we are. I got it. <laughs> okay. So the uh, on the west side uh, towards Squire Pond, you can see the grayed out area, which is really outlining the um, screened in porch. Now, yeah, only 
Right. Only a portion of that is screened in. There's also, um, op you know, open decking. Right. There is. Uh, which isn't to code. There's, you know, there's no railings. It's quite a steep drop off. Um, and then the, you know, the pilings and, and footings underneath it are um, quite dangerous actually. Um, mm -hmm. Which is really, you know, I feel it's great in, when you're inside, it feels wonderful and, and it looks wonderful. But um, uh, uh, the inspector uh, said it was quite unsafe. Um, and so uh, in speaking with uh, Ezra Ambrose, um, you know, the, the notion, what, what A, in order to excavate, uh, but B, also to, to address the safety issues, uh, the thought was to uh, take down that screen porch and to rebuild it. There's also an Having been, on, having been on that screen porch and around that house, I have no problem with the removal of that screen porch. It has a ramshackle appearance and it's inconsistent with the architecture that exists at the rest of the property. Yeah, it also has a reverse incline roof. It takes moisture to the house. Right, uh, not good. But it has, no, it's, it has no historical significance. Um, now, uh, okay, so if you want to move to uh, the you know, the here. Um, so, you know, no expansion of the footprint, but we, we do need to address uh, the failing foundation um, no. and is failing in a number of places. You can, uh, mm -hmm. you can feel that evidence. You can see the evidence is visible, but also you can feel it on, you know, in the interior of the house and, and see it on the roof lines as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Recommendation to us was to lift the house, um, you know, and to replace the foundation fully. We're, we were planning on doing an eight foot, you know, full um, poured, you know, poured concrete. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other uh, investment we want to make into the house is to, um, you know, is to fully insulate and uh, add HVAC and whatnot. But, you know, our, our proposal for today is really just to um, initiate the first phase of this. So much of the, you know, additional plans has not been set yet. Um, we are, you know, trying to be expeditious about this. And, and uh, our thought was to deal with the lift of the house and the foundation of the house just to stabilize so then we can then see what, uh, what we're dealing with. Uh, and that, that was the, so we, you know, our, our plan was to come back to you in many phases. So, you know, hopefully we will get to know one another, um, you know, over the, over the course of time and we'll firm up our plans along the way. Will the elevation, the first floor elevation of the house change after the new foundation is installed? Yeah, there's uh, no, uh, not unless it will have to, but I, I that, that is not the plan. So th this much of the foundation approximately will be exposed at the completion of the project. Correct. And what surface are you intending to provide on the new exposed portions of the concrete foundation? That's a great question. And I was, um, um, and I think as I wrote in my, in my proposal, I, wa I wanted to defer to this committee as to what to do. Um, uh, the initial, you know, our current thinking is uh, just the concrete um, because those areas of the house are, are quite uh, hidden. Um, you know, as I said, during the wintertime, it's, it's a little bit more exposed, but certainly right now, you could, I mean, I, as I was trying to find photo or get photographs for you, it was actually quite difficult for me to get them because of how grown, uh, you know, how, how lush it is. Um, but I, I am willing, you know, we are willing to defer to this, to this group. Um, but we, I don't think we can necessarily tell you what to do, but I would, what I would say about it is this, that when there's such a wonderfully historic house, such as this house that has a great history and has, appears to not have been touched in 70 years, except that out of place screen porch and everything is intact and all that history is still there. And then you're going to do something that changes it. I don't, I personally am suggesting that you don't necessarily, when you change it, need to do something that is trying to look like the original portion of the house, because what you're changing and the evolution of the house becomes the house's history. So for that reason, um, I, for example, would not be inclined, if it were my house, to install you know, reclaimed brick veneer on the foundation. I would sort of let the foundation be something of today um, and the house preserving all those wonderful details be something of its other eras. I know there were two houses right. together. I know all that sort of stuff happened. Um, so, you know, I'm not big on kind of like faux old stuff, you know, <laughs> I think if it's not old, then don't, don't pretend it is. I mean, it can be, 
consistent in character. I'm I'm personally not a great fan of the appearance of poured concrete when the forms are just removed from it on historic houses. The house at the foot of Holbrook Avenue where it joins Commercial Street comes to mind where I almost wish there was um, half inch cement parging in natural gray over that foundation, just so it has a cleaner look and you don't see the impressions from the concrete forms exposed. Um, mm. this, this is a personal take. This is not mm. in any way this committee telling you what you have to do. <laughs> I, well, I appreciate that opinion. Um, um, I'm blanking on her name. I consulted. There. No, it'll come to me. I apologize. It'll come to me. Um, you know, the one thing that has come to mind, and, and I think we 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 tried to render some drawings. Um, uh, I think it's on page three. You know that the the and and since you know the property, there's there's quite a significant slope uh, in the back of the rear and the rear of the barn on the west side of the barn. Mm -hmm. barn. Today that's on pilings, um, and. Um, from some of the photographs, you might actually see that it was just basically used as storage. I say that in quotes. I, I don't think it was really quite storage. It looked like it was really more uh, it excess. Piled. It was piled stuff under there. Excess garbage. Um, yeah. Oh dear. But it's that's that's the one area where that foundation would be quite exposed. Um, and uh, you know, we just tried to render because we actually, to be honest, what we had done was we had started playing around with just image, imagery for ourselves, just to see what it would look like if that were brick or whatnot. And uh, we didn't really have much of a taste for the brick facing there. Yeah. Um, we felt like it, it looked much better, uh, you know, in this way. But I think that is probably more consistent with what you're describing, which is probably what we would do with something like what you um, just yeah, described. But yeah, what I'm describing is a poured concrete foundation wall with a, basically a cement wash over it. Right. To, you know, more, to give it a more finished look instead of just leaving the jagged pieces yeah. of concrete on the surface that are inevitably there when the forms are removed. Yeah, I, I think um, we had not finalized that with Ezra because I wanted to, I wanted to consult with this group mm -hmm. uh, as to what, you know, what that phasing should be. But um, I, that sounds more consistent with what we would, you know, what we would pursue. Okay, we, well, come back to us and let us know what you decide. Um, and what else can I tell you? Um, you know, th there, is, there is enough height in that back there. So we are um, uh, proposing windows there. Um, These windows here? Correct. And we would, we would do that consistent with, you know, with what's on the barn. Um, and uh, So are you proposing to insulate the barn, I guess? Uh, I would like to, um, you know, we've, we've spoken to Ezra about different methods to do such. Um, we haven't finalized an approach yet. So, uh, you know, we're not, we're, you know, we're not bringing that part of the phase to this, you know, to this uh, you know, uh, approval request at this time. So is the request um, for today just about the, the foundation and raising the house? Correct. That's it. Okay. All right. Or l lifting the house, providing a new foundation and putting the house back right where it was. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It looks like the house is, the front elevation is fairly low to the ground. Yeah. And, um, right here. It's one of those areas where I'm not sure. I mean, the, the, the code would mandate that the house be raised a little bit if he had the opportunity, if they had the opportunity um, to get the wood further away from the, the ground yeah. level. But yeah. I don't know if that's something that Ezra would propose or would need to do. I don't know what the new building inspector would say when um, when we when we get one. You know, I'm, I think Rich Stevens is filling in some and and he's great, but that might be kind of a gray area where, you know, where there's conflicting um, sure departments or well, I I, I will say um, there is much about this house because it hasn't been touched um, in a hundred years, it seems uh, that's not done to code, uh, yeah. including the electricals and plumbing. Um, and um, uh, so, you know, again, our intent would be to get everything, you know, as much as we can to code without obviously destroying the, you know, some of the history in the house. Um, uh, so if that if that were a requirement, I think that's what we would do. Ezra did not mention that to me, um, and I'll, I, I haven't researched it, so I'll have to I'll have to look into that. 
Do you know offhand in Massachusetts what the distance separation is between the bottom of a wood siding and, and grade? It's nine inches in New York State, but I don't know what the Massachusetts is. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's nine. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm it's, not sure if there's been a code change real real recently, but mm -hmm. I, I you know from from memory without having taken a rule to it, it's like right it's right on the cusp. I mean it's it's you know it's right around that you know eight eight inch range. So, you know it might even be a little less in some areas to be honest. Um, in any case, I think that the the foundation the exposed foundation it looks like it's going to be low enough and uh, to to kind of be concealed by plantings and stuff anyway. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't think that will be very visible at all. I think the only, um, and, and honestly, because the rear really faces uh, Squire Pond, right. unless you were hiking uh, back in our backyard there, uh, you wouldn't even see that either. It would, it's not really visible to the public. This area right here. Right, it's not even really visible to us. You know, it, it's, a, it's, I mean, I'm sure you remember, it's quite wild. Uh, and natural in the back, in the back, uh, it is. you know, part of the, of the, and, uh, you know, outside of what happens, you know, during the excavation, our, you know, our intent was to, to, to leave it fairly wild. That was, you know, it's one of the things that we love about it. Mm, that's great. Well, well, it's wonderful to hear that you're planning on taking such good care of this historic house and that you'll be replacing the foundation because it will help it last for many more years. That's our hope. Yeah, <laughs> ours too. <laughs> so would you would you like to make a decision about what you want the surface of the concrete to be at this meeting, and we can make a motion to approve that, or would you like to think about it more and come back to us for us no, to make a motion? No, I I uh, I think um, what you just described uh, is exactly what we were thinking. I didn't have exactly those words in mind, but that's um, you know I think that's what we would that's what we would propose. One half inch natural gray cement parging over poured concrete. Perfect. That's right, Luke, isn't it? <laughs> okay, do you wanna make the motion, Gordon? Um, I move that the proposal as presented be approved and that the surface of the poured concrete be coated with one half inch natural gray cement parging. Okay. Great. Um, I, uh, Meryl says I. <laughs> Eveline says I. Sorry, we needed a second. I will second and then I'll say I. I heard you, Eveline. Eveline <laughs> says I. Jim, I. Luke, I. Excellent. Great. Congratulations. We will look forward to seeing you with your next stages. But yeah, absolutely. Well, what you're doing. Welcome Thank you. To, welcome to Wellfleet. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And so the next proposal is 140 Commercial Street. Um, and that's Jeremy Young and Luke Manning. Um, and there's Jeremy. Welcome. Um, Jeremy, are you presenting? No, my contractor, uh, Luke Manning here will be. <laughs> uh, hey, Jeremy, how are you, Jeremy? Good, thanks, I'm um, good, thanks. So obviously I need to recuse myself. So it's, it's good we have another, uh, another vote. Thank you for being here, Evelyn. We wouldn't be able to vote on it if you weren't here. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> um, so the, should I go ahead then? Great, thank you. So the, there's gonna be some renovations to the interior of the building um, so that they can occupy more of the ground floor. Um, so what is relative to this meeting is the changes that that means for the outside. And that is primarily a small addition in the back of the building. Um, Basically, it's uh, connecting one wing of the, the house, which they occupy now, to another room that they can't access as it stands now, um, and expanding their mudroom to have a few more square feet 
and serve as a hallway entranceway into this additional room. Um, the second part of this would be to uh, incorporate six over six, 400 series Anderson windows um, in that room that we're going that to is renovate. It? So that's the new mud room. The, what I'm circling here is, yep. is, is the extent of the addition and then right. closing the Anderson windows to go in it and yep. all the details on your new work is, are going to be consistent with the existing details on the much beloved Holden Inn. Right. So at, this is one of Alan Cabral's drawings. In, in all of his drawings, the dotted lines represent what's existing. So that wall you're pointing out right now um, is the outside wall of the existing mudroom, which is right to the right of your cursor. Mm -hmm. And that's just a few square feet to serve as an entryway with a closet. And basically, we would be adding on to the left of your cursor, to the next dotted line right there, which is the existing corner of the building. Am I, am I accurately tracing? Yep, that's, that's perfect. Okay. So, and in that little alcove, as it stands now from the outside, there's a, um, there's a low sloped shed roof over the existing mudroom. And mm -hmm. then um, there's a, basically a, a large, it's not really a bulkhead, but it's a entryway into the crawl space to, to get to some pipes, um, which is basically under where that new closet is proposed. Here. So yeah, so we'd be removing a small um, entryway right. that now exists to under the house and incorporating the same access point into the closet floor. Mm -hmm. So can I just switch to the photographs, Luke? Um, yeah. You sent them in in a zip, so I had to keep downloading them individually because. Oh, I'm sorry. That's I, okay. It's I kind not of it, that off on Michelle too. So any. I'll, well, you I'll tell Michelle, Michelle that it's probably me. I'm not pointing any fingers, but let me just let me just open some of these photographs and tell me when to stop. How about that? Sure. I can tell you what we're looking at when we. So. That that's the front of the inn. Mm -hmm. Um. So going back to the, the windows, just to jump around a little bit, um, the, the set of three windows on the far right-hand side of the building that are existing there, mm -hmm. as well as two which are behind the screened-in porch and not really visible in that picture. Back in here somewhere. Are, yeah, we went in front of Historic to uh, replace those with uh, previous renovations. Mm -hmm. And what we're proposing to do tonight is to replace uh, several more around the left-hand side of the building, including, okay. the, yeah, with, with the same exact okay. white 400 series, six over six uh, okay. Andersons. Do we have a picture that's closer up of those three windows? Um, I don't think that there's one of the three existing. But what's this, what's this Lou? This, so this is the back of the inn. The, the two windows on the ground floor are um, older with the storm windows over them, which would be swapped out for the new Anderson six over sixes. And your addition is going here? Exactly. And this is the low shed roof you were referring to earlier? Yes. And there's a, there's a picture that gives you a better idea of what's in that, that alcove there. Uh, Can I ask a question? Um, it looked like the windows you were referring to swapping out um, for are longer than these. Is that right? That they're more. Um, they're they're actually the they they may be just a little bit longer, but they're the the almost exactly the same. They're they're the closest size wise that we can that we can get. Okay, so they won't be a different shape. They'll be very no okay. no. Um, the light actually, cuts will be approximately the same proportion. Right. Yeah, almost exactly the same proportion. There, um, the idea really is to 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 do as little changing of the rough openings as, as possible. Um, not because they preferred, uh, you know, that Jeremy and Heather haven't come out and said we we want exactly the same size window. It's just what's always been there, and it's um, the easiest construction wise to kind of do like a like for like. Yeah. Um, so that, that inside corner there with the 
the small mud room with the entry door um, would go away and that um, next to where the air condenser is for the, for the HVAC, that would be relocated and that exactly what you're pointing out there, the entry to the um, downstairs mechanical area would, mm -hmm. would go away. Mm -hmm. And instead there's one shed roof that would be under those three windows connecting the two sides of the building and it would serve as a yeah, larger yeah. mudroom and, okay. and entry into that portion on the right hand side of the screen and come down to about where my cursor is right yeah in the room you can see on the on the drawings the um the um proportions of the proposed roof and and the room it's not uh it doesn't go right up to under those windows it's not um it, it's really nothing very drastic in my opinion it's just a matter of uh getting the getting the space to function as it needs to mm -hmm. okay hold on let me just fiddle for one second here i need my assistant Katie. <laughs> let's do that I will put a photo, plan, drawings. Yeah. Oh, that's helpful. Thanks. Okay. What's the pitch here? It's a little small. I can't see Luke. Uh, four and 12, does that say? Four and 12, it says, yeah. Well, that would be great. Is it the same pitch as the roof above it? I'm not sure what that roof is, but the but I it, it, the idea wasn't for it to match the pitch of that roof, um, and I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head what the pitch of that roof is. Most of the most of the upper roofs on the end have a very steep pitch, and that obviously is a shed dormer, so it, it kind of mimics it. But I'm not um, uh -huh. I'm not sure what that pitch actually is. Probably the pitch is based on this dimension and where you have to land to get your window and door. Yeah, we didn't want to come up with the roof right under those upper windows and have issues with moisture or flashing anything. Um, and we needed the headroom, obviously. That the existing mudroom, um, we almost couldn't install that door when we did pr previous renovations there. This we door. um we had to, you know, special order a door, and we're actually going to use the same door again, just relocate it. But um, it's it was it was kind of a problematic little area to to renovate the first time around. Yeah, now it's tight in there, and you've got water coming down this way, water coming down this way, water coming down this way. Yeah, yeah, that's tricky. Um, I'm just gonna look at some more photographs because you sent them. <laughs> so what was I up to? Did we look at this one yet? So. That is a good one to show because those are the other two existing windows on the on the driveway side of the building. That would the idea is to continue around the rest of the ground floor with the the new six over six windows and get away from the the ones with the uh, storms over them. And this is the driveway to the left of the building as you're right. Yep. Street. Right. Okay. And hold on. That's the one we just looked at. Evidently, I downloaded it twice. We're going to, um, if we go ahead, we're going to keep the same head casing and the same um, trim detail. Good. Great. It's, uh, we're not, we're not even stripping the uh, older clapboard. Good. It's, it's really going to be. We're good. we're focused on an interior renovation to give them more more living space, uh, which which they need, and the 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 new windows are more of a heat loss um, function type of an upgrade. And the rest of the outside envelope is really just staying as is. And I mean, I really appreciate my old friend, the Holden Inn, still looking the same. <sighs> Yeah, and this seems like a very um, practical addition to connect two parts of the building that you couldn't that weren't connected before. 
Um, yeah, as it, as it stands now, the inside, um, when you when you enter to the left, <clears throat> there's two rooms which um, have been rented out. The one in the, the room in the back, they've rented out, and it's it's just more valuable space to them to have. They're not, uh, you know, they they've settled in there, and Jeremy and Heather aren't, you know aren't leaving, they're not building a house somewhere else. So they're trying to make this work for their, their family. And, and that's the whole idea. This, this whole wing, I'm sorry, I'm pointing at the screen. You can't see me. The, the whole oh. wing of the house on the far right. Oh, this. Um, we did a very elaborate renovation to the inside, which, um, you know, you, you wouldn't really be able to tell from the outside that it was even, even done. You cannot um, tell. Yeah. And, and, you know, with their, with their schedule and the in operating, there's like scheduling issues to keep in mind. So we, we were pretty successful at, at pulling that off last, last go around. And now it's basically um, doing the same thing, but you know, less square footage over on the left-hand side there. And they're preserving that front room labeled as a bedroom. Um, that, that and the entry hallway and the stairs going up are what are going to remain as part of the, the inn with, with the upstairs. Oh, I see. So you walk in here and this is rented. Right. Jeremy's going to occupy all this. Exactly. Great. Okay. Okay. Any questions? No. Do, do we have a proposal? I mean, a motion. <laughs> we have a proposal. I move, I move that the proposal be um, accepted as presented. I'll second that. Great. Uh, Meryl votes aye. This uh, is Eveline. Jim, aye. Gordon, aye. Congratulations. Yes. Hey, Jeremy, Thank nice you. to see you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Luke. Yeah. Th thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you both. Take care. Okay. I have to stop sharing the screen stuff. So um, I, I, the next item is about member outreach um, and residency requirements. And since we have someone with us who's interested in being a member, <laughs> um, could you give us your name again? Oh, you need to unmute yourself. Sorry. No, I'm, I'm muted. So I'm Susan Baker. I live just down the road from Jeremy and the Holden and I, I moved in. I bought the house about four years ago, and um, Where, I'm, which house I'm, is it, Susan? I'm sorry. Which house is it, Susan? It's 180 Commercial, so it's the one that had the took away the parking area in the front and put the screen porch in the front of it. Oh, right. And Dickie did it. Um, yeah, so it's great. And um, you know, I grew up in Wellfleet. My mom Baker from Wellfleet. Um, I'm involved in historic preservation in Salem. I work for the House of Seven Gables as their curator, collection manager. I work for a lot of um, historic properties around the state and the North Shore mostly. So uh -huh. I am dedicated to um, to maintain an historic, the historic nature of cities and towns. And um, I'm, I hope to be part of this committee so I can help you try and make sure that happens. And well, that's, wonderful. that's, that's great awesome. to hear. That sounds great, Susan. It's nice yeah. to hear. Um, so um, would you be willing to give me your email address so that we can be in communication about this? Absolutely. So I, um, I sent in my application and then the next thing I got was this invitation to this meeting. So I did get a note from someone saying that the board, that the select board had to approve it. And that's the last I've heard of it. So my email is okay. susanbaker180 at gmail.com. Okay. Wonderful. Um, it's funny. I don't, I don't remember getting, when did you send in the application? It was probably about two weeks ago now. It was, it was very recent. And did um, you send it to the Historical Commission? I sent it in to this, the town. You know, they asked for volunteer oh, okay. applications and I sent it in and said I'd be That's interested great. in this. And okay. the next thing so, I, did, I, I knew I got this email, so. Okay. So if we, have, if we have six of us here and then Mac is joining us, that makes seven. 
Yes, but Susan needs to go before the select board and be approved. Susan needs <laughs> to be approved at the select. We would love to have you join us. It's wonderful to hear about um, your experience. And I guess, so are you related to LD Baker? I am. Great, great uncle. Wow. wow. Great, great, great uncle. I'm not sure which. Um, yeah. yeah, it's all the, you know, we're related distantly to half the town, but I don't, you know, it, it, they're very distantly, so. And, and related distantly to half the houses since he owned yeah. half the houses in town at one time. Yeah. He kind of did. Yeah, it was a pretty sure amazing guy. I'm very happy that you're applying to the Historical Commission. Well, I'm thrilled to be part of it. I mean, I really, I'm really dedicated to this. I'm very involved in Salem because I still work a couple of days a week for the House of Seven Gables. So what is your background that in, that enabled you to work for the House of the Seven Gables and be involved? So I've, um, I worked at, for the PV Essex Museum. Um, and then I then I got a master's in museum studies from Harvard, and then I um, I've been working for various museums around the North Shore because I was living here at the time, totally. and um, and so I worked for the Schlesinger Library at Harvard. I worked for um, the Lynn Museum in the city of Lynn on the North Shore. Mm -hmm. I've worked for the PB Essex, as I mentioned. I'm sure I've worked for other people. I'm just blanking on who it is right now. Yeah, um, no, that's great. I, I, again, this was not in any way to qualify you or disqualify you, or I was just right. interested because you seem yeah, to- Yeah, and what's, what's interesting <laughs> is that organizations, I, work, I also worked for Historic New England briefly, and mm -hmm. Historic New England and the PBD Essex Museum um, both own, well, Historic New England owns over 30 historic properties around New England, and the PBD Essex owns 26 historic properties in the city of Salem. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've been involved for a long time in kind of historic preservation issues. And in the city, and the city of Salem right now, I'm very involved in um, in trying to help the city plan for adaptation strategies for rising sea levels, because that's a huge issue in the city as it is for any place on the coast. And, um, and particularly as it relates to historic preservation. So that's kind of what I've been involved in a lot lately. Great to have you with us. Provincetown is gonna to wanna to grab you as well. <laughs> We have, yeah, the whole case is going to be in need of this. Yes. But right. But you're you're a, you're a Felician, so you're with us. We got you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm a Felician. <laughs> Absolutely. Terrific. Okay. So we will be in touch. Um, we're so glad that you've applied. And well, thank you. Thank you. So you'll be in touch, and I'll just I'll just be at the board meeting, the select board meeting, which is soon, I think. And um, yeah. And Great. then we'll see what happens. No, um, I, I don't know if they told you how this works, but unfortunately, um, partly because town hall is so short staffed, they don't tend to notify people to let them know if they're on the agenda. Okay. So, so you might want to just check the select board agenda for the meeting rather than sitting through a whole meeting and then finding out you aren't on it. That's a good idea. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that tip. And if um, I will be doing the same, so let's communicate. When, when one of us sees that you're on the agenda, I'd like to come and support your application. Oh, so Thank you. Just, um, please be sure to let me know if you notice that you're on the agenda. And I I'll will. And can do you have a direct email that I could? Um, well, you can reach us through the Wellfleet Historical Commission at okay. .com email. Um, okay. You did exactly the right thing. You're supposed to apply through the select board, but that's why we didn't know about your application because they didn't they didn't send us anything. Okay. So we're we're so glad that you're here and that you introduced yourself. Well, thank you for um, thank you for being so welcoming. I'm I'm excited. To, I hopefully everything will work out. I'd be excited to help out as much as I can. It would be great. It's okay. great to meet you, Susan. You're welcome to stay on if you want to see the yeah. rest of what we do. But. Yeah, I'd love to just listen to what you guys are doing. And I do have to leave in about 15 minutes, but I'll just mute myself and I'll listen in. That's OK. okay. And, and then I'll disappear. Defend. OK. Leave whenever you want. All right. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Bye. You're welcome. Um, all right. So we talked about the residency requirements last time, but the great news is that people don't actually have to be from Wellfleet in order to apply. Um, we do have another person who's applying um, who's terrific. And so we, he'll be going before the select board perhaps at the same time. Um, Susan, so we'll see what happens with all of that. But um, it looks like we may be on our way to having a full seven member commission. And we're very happy to have Eveline with us. It's great to have you here for your first Thank meeting. You. Welcome, yeah. Eveline. Nice to be here. I hope we weren't scary. I'm very scared, actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're, it's, this whole process of uh, meeting by Zoom has been challenging, and uh, and you know, so, I'm so impressed by the way you're handling um, the screen sharing part of it, Gordon. I really appreciate what you're doing. Thanks so much. I just I have to say I am I am I'm feeling like 
it's not as smooth as I'd like it to be because it's hard for me to download the applications because they come in 10 pieces mm. instead of sort of in one PDF. Yeah. And then as I'm opening and closing, all these pop-up things keep opening about like admitting people. Do I want to stop sharing my screen? All sorts sure. of stuff. And it kind of physically gets in the way on the screen. So if, if I seem like I'm fumbling, I'm just moving stuff around. <laughs> um, yeah. So I actually, um, a lot, so, so one of the things that we've been talking, well, this is a little off the agenda, I guess. Yeah, so I shouldn't talk about it. I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so I don't think we need to talk about anything else in terms of member outreach. Um, in terms of the historic plan and Form D B updates, um, is Jim still with us? I don't see him. Oh, Jim, where'd you go? Not here. Huh. I didn't kick him out, I don't think. Um, maybe I should send him a note. Yeah, he's not here. Um, let's see. Or I could, why don't I mute myself and call him? Okay. Um, we'll although then, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and chat and I'll be back. <laughs> yes. So it is challenging to sort through the applications because they come in the email and it's not kind of regularized format. Mm -hmm. And I spent more than two hours last night uh, sitting on my floor in my apartment in Manhattan because I'm at work through today, just trying to um, get the things on my screen mm -hmm. in such a way that I could share them. And so when, um, I guess when, when the Ryder Court project came up, I mean, I found whatever drawings I was sent, but I don't know if I didn't find the right drawings or if I wasn't sent the right drawings. And, you know, it's just, it's a quagmire because we have no secretary. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's sort of like, you know, Marilyn doing all this paperwork and then me doing all this paperwork. And, you know, as Luke, can, Luke knows how busy he is and how busy I am. And I, I mean, I'm running an architectural firm in Manhattan, mostly from Wall Street. <laughs> A little bit so, busy right now. <laughs> so it's a little, it's the whole, the whole thing. We have to really look at sort of how we're going to sharpen ourselves up and focus the lens on, on process. Yeah. I know I keep saying that I missed the library meetings, but you know, part of, part of the reason why I do is because the, uh, the paperwork can just be passed around the table. Everybody sees the same thing. Somebody can point yeah. something out. I mean, yeah, it's an I easy think, process. I think everybody's done a great job, especially Gordon with uh, putting everything together and up on the screen. I mean, it's, it's it, better you than me. I would be completely lost. But um, but I think, you know, especially for somebody um, presenting a project, it, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to, you know, be in person and, and be able to point, point out things on their own set of drawings and yeah. pass around and yeah, it's too bad too, because I think with this new Delta variant, I don't think we're likely to be meeting in person for a while. Everything's closing up again. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we can, so maybe oh, we can. Oh, oh good. Maybe. I just did my first work day in Provincetown. I had to go back to a job, which is oh my countries have been at, and it's a zoo. Everybody's masked up and mm -hmm. dove in the house and didn't make a move. Well, you know, in New York now, if you want to eat indoors or go to a movie indoors or go to a concert or anything, if anything ever exists anymore, you have to prove that you're double vaccinated as of the 15th of all. I mean, how can you even do that? Like the card is ridiculous. Could be anybody's card that you're carrying. Right. I just have a photograph of my card. I mean, yeah, I think it's to encourage people to get vaccinated. So, that, yeah. but whatever it is, yeah. the thing is very, very scary. But I do think that in the interim, and I think this is on the agenda, I don't know if it's on the agenda. In the interim, I think when we when people make applications to us, and I've been working on what the application should look like here in my office with Katie, my assistant, but I think we can now issue a statement to people when they make applications that they should send their applications in one or two combined PDFs. That's yeah. a good idea. I mean, moment. it's easy enough to do. They just have to scan all of the documents as yeah. one. It, it's because simple. it's impossible to, I'll, I'll miss something. And it's not, and then I have to keep scrambling yeah. on the screen. If I can just like the school street application, I could just yeah. open it and go down the whole thing. And then he had the survey. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. that was good. Um, that it, is the format. 
<laughs> and it is difficult, as Luke said, to be, I mean, I've been in the position of trying to present drawings that I've prepared when I'm not the host. And it's, it's really frustrating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, anyway, that maybe I should make the person who is um, presenting the temporary host at the beginning of the presentation and then shift it back to me so they can share the screen in the way they want to. And we, I think about this more. Anyway, I'm just a little frustrated because really I spent more than two hours last night just trying to find this stuff. And yes. it's just completely, that's like not a good system, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, along those lines, I have some good news, I think. Um, I hear that there's another town meeting planned for fall. Yeah. So I'm going to investigate whether we can apply for um, funds to get a secretary to do some of the things that you have to do to prepare for the meeting. Or, and you do too, Meryl. I mean, it's both of us. That's true. It's both of us. Yeah. I mean, there should be packets that get sent out. Somebody, the secretary should do the agenda, send out packets to all of us. Yeah. You know, if it's going to be a Zoom thing, my packet then becomes the one that gets shared. Let's I not mean, spend a lot of time on it though, because it's, yeah. it's a whole complicated thing. And I'm not positive that we can make an application this time because of the funding issues in town. But um, yeah, right, there's that. It, it's something, I, it's just a little glimmer of hope that there might be a little bit more help with this. Hope. <laughs> Spring <laughs> eternal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it's too bad that Jim isn't here because he's been doing a lot of wonderful work related to the Form Bs and uh, the historic plan. Um, for, for Susan and Eveline, um, one of the I think one of the fun parts of um, being on the historical commission is that we're responsible for updating the historic inventories on all the historic houses in town. And, um, and part of that, so we hire a preservation specialist who does that work and we pay for that person with CPC funds, community preservation committee funds. And then um, part of what we need to do is help with the editing of those forms before they get sent to the mass historical commission and get put online. Um, so Jim's been doing a lot of work about that and, um, Jim's, jo it. Jim's joining us right now. Oh, good. Glad he, was <laughs> he was having reception problems. His wife said, Oh no. Glad you're back, Jim. We see you part way. <laughs> um, let's see, I guess maybe we should keep going and then go back to him if there's anything he wants to share about that. Um, with regard to the comparative design guidelines, um, our, we had talked about them last week. Um, I was trying, I mean, last month, um, and I was trying to remember whether we actually voted on them. Because if so, I could send them to all of the new members. I think, Thank oh, you. I know, Gordon, I had sent you the, um, the new draft based on the revisions that you were suggesting, and I yeah. never heard back. Yeah. So, um, I apologize, they're perfect. You've had a lot going on in your life, I know. <laughs> Always. They're perfect. Let's distribute and move forward with it. Okay, great. So um, I will be sending um, everybody then those guidelines so that we have them. And just to be clear about them, um, we do use the Secretary of Interior um, <laughs> guidelines. And then we've been working on making more specific guidelines that we're using on an internal basis at this point. Um, that talks more about windows and chimneys and doors and that kind of thing. And so um, I will send that around so that everybody has it. But basically we had a subcommittee develop the guidelines and then we voted on them as a committee. Uh, may, I, may I just interject? I apologize for being, <laughs> for ghosting the meeting for three minutes of panic while I tried to get back on. I'm sorry, but the minutes uh, don't say in fact that we did vote on the guidelines. So oh, okay. we might want to do that now. Okay, the, I guess the trouble is that um, Eveline hasn't seen them to, oh, did I send them to you, Eveline? Yes, you did. The <laughs> and the, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so has everybody seen them in order to vote on them? You saw them, Luke, right? Yes. Yeah, all right, good. So um, I would like to make a motion that we accept the di design guidelines um, as revised. I second that motion. Uh, I, Meryl, vote aye. Aye, Gordon. Aye, aye. Aye. Jim, aye. Luke, aye. Hooray. All right. Thank you very much. So I will send those out. Um, and 
Let's see, um, Jim, do you want to add, um, do, you, do you want to update any, people about anything regarding the historic plan and uh, the Form B update? Oh, we need to talk about the workshop as well. I'll talk about that part. Oh. Do you, you want to talk about any of the other things? Well, I was going to, I was going to talk about the workshop, actually. Okay, uh, go ahead. We were, I was in touch with... Uh, uh, Mary Rogers, uh, considering uh, um, with respect to our co-sponsoring a fall workshop with the uh, Wellfleet Historical Society uh, and Museum, and at, at that point, the prospective assessment of an admissions fee that would be donated in full to the museum. I asked her to consider that and respond to it, and she said, first of all, of course, that the two agencies have common interests and the association between them has a long precedent. So there's no problem with that at all. Uh, she did say that uh, publicly funded workshops are usually uh, free of charge. Uh, although there was nothing in specifically in the CPC grant guidelines that prevents uh, assessment of an admissions uh, fee. However, uh, the proposals that we have uh, made did not make any reference to assessing a fee. And she said, if we indeed intended to do that, we would need to request approval. She wasn't sure we'd get it. Um, I did express to her that there was an alternative that we were entertaining, and that would be uh, perhaps uh, uh, placing uh, collection envelopes in the venue where the workshop would be held, uh, where uh, people could make voluntary donations uh, to the historical society and museum. And she was very enthusiastic about that. She said, that sounds like it's a very good plan. It's well within the scope of everything that's been approved. You wouldn't have to ask, obviously, for approval to do that. That sounds um, good. So that's, that's where we are. Thanks, Jim. I guess the only problem with that is that um, given what's going on with COVID right now, I think it yes. would need to be a yeah. virtual presentation. Yeah. But um, maybe we could do something like um, make an announcement um, and encourage people to donate. Yes. But the reason um, we were thinking about this is that we, because we're a, we're basically a state affiliated commission, we don't actually have a, a um, mailing list of donors the way the historical society museum does and we and so we also don't have a mailing list of people that are interested in historical issues and so we were thinking that in addition to putting out um things online and in the newspaper about a workshop that it'd be helpful to get to the members of the historical society museum and they're in the midst of a huge fundraiser right now so we thought perhaps we could do a quid pro quo where we help them out with the fundraising so um uh, I, I guess, so what we have talked about is, um, I um, have been in communication with Lynn Smilage, who's our preservation specialist, about um, doing a presentation about the historic buildings and some of the stories that go with them in town, um, which would be fairly simple for her to do because she's been doing all of these write-ups and um, she's done a bit of public speaking and would be willing to do it and sent a fee that was a reasonable fee. Um, for the workshop, which is, I think it was $400. Um, so, um, so I guess it, it probably would make sense to have a vote on just pursuing that option, if that's okay with everybody. Um, do, you, do you have anything to add or any concerns about that, Jim? No, no, I think that we could proceed with a vote. Okay. Um, I know the other thing I was wondering about is with the CPC funds, um, uh, are we applying to keep that money from the 2018 grant that was for a workshop? Or are we shifting it over to the newer grant? Uh, the, what I had submitted, uh, and that was, I think, in advance of our discussion of the workshop, is that all of the balance remaining in the 2018 grant would be devoted to the Form uh, Bs. Uh, all right, that's fine. Okay. Yep. But we, we still have the money in the new grant to do Yes. This. Oh, yes, we do. But there's, there's over a thousand there um, in the new grant. Uh, in the Good. So I would like to propose that um, we continue to work with Lynn Smilage, the preservation specialist, to create a workshop to hopefully happen um, in the fall. Um, would anybody like to second that motion? I will. 
Thank you. Um, I, Merrill, vote aye. Jim, aye. Gordon, aye. aye. Okay. You never know what order to vote, and we never have figured that out. You know, I can maybe we do this, not interrupt on Zoom. <laughs> um, all right, that's terrific. Um, and then we talked about the historic design guidelines, and the um, the last item was what um, Gordon was talking about before, actually, around um, Gordon is working to try to create a new application that's um, more clear about what the kinds of materials that we need and the form in which we need to receive them. I mean, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for plans, mm -hmm. elevations, and photos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just simple, and the survey if they have it. Yeah. Just simple in one PDF. And then you can go through the presentation by first showing the plans and then showing the elevations and then showing the photos. Yeah, it would be much I, smoother. I was finding with um, with the uh, the Ryder Court one that we were talking about today that it would have been so useful for me to see the current elevation and the proposed elevation yeah. side by side, and that would yeah. generally be so easy. You know, I would think that would be easy for them to present. It would be much easier for us to evaluate what they're doing if it's side by side rather than in completely different places. Right, that would be easier. I can ask for that. Okay, thanks. That would be great. Side by side. Um, um, anything else that anybody wants to add about that? Oh, I know about the, so the follow-up with the building department. Um, I, uh, I need to talk to you about that, Gordon. We can talk about that offline, but um, sure. yeah. And, and let's talk about how we would go about changing the application. So okay. I understand what the process is. Uh, oh, you mean offline or in the meeting? No, just offline. Let's. I, I, we don't have to bother everybody else with the logistics of how we get a new application into the public world. Oh, I, uh, and remove the old application. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can, can I just point out that um, with the side by side? Yeah. Um, that when people have been able to present side by side, it, it's super useful, um, yeah. without a doubt. Mm -hmm. But if somebody applies for a building permit and then gets gets uh, sent in front of us, which is, is more times than not the case. Um, they're not always required to have hired somebody to produce an, an existing, um, existing elevations of the building. So that, that would kind of be us. Um, Adding after to everything's been submitted and it's been kicked in front of us, then we're asking them to get further plans made. And like, well, I, I have a house that um, I wanted to have plans made and I'd had no, nothing on, on file and it cost, you know, several thousand dollars just to have somebody painstakingly plot out every detail of the existing. Well, I have no comments about that, but <laughs> we, as an architect, but you could show, you could show a photograph of what's existing and a drawing of what's proposed. I think that is, uh, is you know, perfectly acceptable. Yeah. 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 I was so confused by that writer court application. I mean, that house is confusing to begin with. Yeah. And then I didn't, it was, it was just confusing. And I guess we didn't have all the drawings anyway. And then he's like well, holding them up to his computer or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess the other issue that I wonder about is, you know, the way it works now is that often people are submitting all their materials to Dari at the building department, and then she sends us the materials. And I don't know what happened that we got different materials than what he was presenting to us. Yeah. It's so tempting to me to have people send us the materials directly um, because the, part of the problem is that when I get them from Dari, um, it's not um, it's not clear uh, how to respond correspond with the person who has submitted the material. Sometimes people don't put their contact information on the application, so then it becomes a time consuming effort. Very difficult. Um, I think that they should they should send the applications to us with a copy to Dari, so she has a record in the building department, but we get the applications firsthand. Then we can say, hey, this is five PDFs. Can you please combine it into one? Yeah, it, Luke, what do you think about that as a contractor? Is that too cumbersome for people that are applying? No, I, I don't think so. In okay. New York City, you apply to the Landmarks Preservation Commission, you apply to the Department of Buildings. 
Yeah. That's the way it works. And you yeah. can't get the building. New York, York City. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, but it's perfectly reasonable to have two different, I mean. Well, you know, I, I haven't applied for Jeremy's permit. Um, I just knew that it would, it would need to come in front of us, you know, so with, with that project, I wanted to, to be proactive and get it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, mo most people in most cases, they would submit everything that was required to the building department for permitting. And then when it was requested by the building inspector that they come in front of us, they would then submit the same file to, okay. to us. So, you know, for a full permit, you might not need as much information on paper as we're actually proposing. We'd like to like to have in front of us, yeah. which is a little, a little hard to demand, I think. But I think obviously for us to vote on things, we have to be able to look at the existing and the proposed and um, be able to clearly see everything. So, mm -hmm. okay. um, you know. When we talk to, well, we can talk about this later, but talk to Dari about how we can about maybe have better communication. Yeah. I mean, well, and, and we probably need to, um, so Gordon and I will continue to work on this um, and we, um, and we, we may need to consult with you, Luke, or maybe just talk about it in the next meeting because I know you're really busy. Um, but um, <laughs> looks like we're losing. Um, but I'll, I'll be back in one second. The cleaning lady's in my office. I have to give her my garbage. <laughs> 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 okay, Gordon is in New York City right now, just so everyone knows. Um, I'm driving back tonight after we're our meeting. So we should try to end soon so you don't have to drive in the dark for too long. But um, so this is an ongoing process to create a new, more streamlined um, application process that works better. And we'll want everybody's input about it. And um, so we'll work on it this month and then probably bring it back to the agenda for next month. And the truth is, Meryl, as, as this goes on, and I learn more about what what's going on and you learn more about what's going on. It actually informs what we can do to improve it in a more reasonable way. So yeah, having so this drag on for a couple of months is a good thing because it's mm -hmm. bringing things up that we wouldn't have been aware of. Yeah, that's true. And, and it may be that it will continue to evolve. We'll, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah. Um, so the next item on the agenda is reviewing the minutes. Did everybody get a chance to look at Jim's terrific minutes? Yes. Do we want to put them up on the, do we have them or do we want to just vote on them? I don't have, I didn't, I didn't download them, but Jim, do you want to send them to me and I can put them up? Well, I don't know that we have to, because I don't think everybody can read them all now. Right, exactly. Um, I read them, I'm good. <laughs> I read them, I'm good. So um, why don't we vote on the minutes? I, I vote to accept the minutes as written. Second. All right. Luke, I. Jim, Jim I. Gordon I. Thanks very much. Okay. okay so we're all set with that. And um, we have completed our meeting. Right. Oh, thank you so much for being with us, Evelyn. It's really <laughs> great to have you here. And uh, it's so exciting to think we may have two new members before long. Hooray, hooray. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, it would be great. And, and it's... Um, Really fun to have a relative of LD Bakers be applying. Yeah, yeah she's, she's pretty tuned into preservation issues. Yeah, even Past better. Seven Gables and all. Yeah, yeah it's just, wonderful. Just for the, the, so we don't have to go back and edit the next minutes. Um, there would be only the four of us voting on last month's minutes. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because Evelyn wouldn't have been at that meeting. Yeah. So um, thanks, Luke, for the reminder. One, two, three, four, right. <laughs> um, all right, so we will be meeting next in August, I mean, in September, yikes. I know. And there the summer will have gone. <laughs> right. the summer, oh, yes. never ends. summer never ends in well fleet these years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope that you all stay healthy and well in the next month and, uh, and that you have a good end of your summer season. And hopefully it will feel like it extends way into September as well. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Yeah, welcome, nice Evelyn. Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome. Great to see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.